and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the topic rates of reaction. Visit my website to download the accompanying notes worksheet to use during the video. The link is in the description box. In all chemical reactions, a new substance is made. The signs of a chemical reaction taking place are a change in colour, a change in temperature, which could be either exo or endothermic, a change in pH, gas being produced, or a solid produced from two solutions, which is called precipitation. To change the speed of a reaction, the following things can be changed. Particle size, concentration, temperature, or adding a catalyst. For a reaction to be successful, the reactant particles must collide. They must do so with sufficient energy. To increase the rate of a reaction, you need to increase the frequency of collisions to increase the chance of successful collisions, or increase the energy of collisions that do occur. Increasing concentration increases the number of collisions in a given volume. This will increase the frequency of collisions and therefore increase the rate of reaction. Increasing surface area by reducing the particle size will increase the frequency of collision and therefore increase the rate of reaction. Increasing temperature will increase the frequency and energy of collisions. This will increase the rate of reaction. Adding a catalyst will provide a lower energy rate for reaction. This means the energy required for the reaction is lowered and therefore reaction rate will increase. Catalysts are chemicals that increase the rate of reaction without being used themselves. Pause the video now and decide if each of these statements are true or false. Statement A is false. Food in a fridge will be at a colder temperature and therefore the reaction will be slower. Statement B is true. Sawdust have smaller particles and therefore a larger surface area than logs, so when burning they will burn faster. Statement C is also true. Dilute bleach will have less bleach particles in the given volume and therefore will react slower than concentrated bleach will. Pause the video now and put these four statements in order, from slowest to fastest. The slowest statement will be C. This is because we have a low concentration with large particles at a low temperature. The next statement will be A. In this statement, we have increased the concentration of acid, but we still have large particles and a low temperature. The second fastest will be D. We have the higher concentration we still have lumps, which are large particles, but we've increased the temperature to 50 degrees. The fastest will be B. We have the higher concentration. This time we've replaced the large particles with smaller particles and the temperature is hot at 50 degrees. There are different ways that we can follow the progress of a reaction. One of the ways is that we can measure the change in mass. We can also measure any volume of gas which is produced. If we're measuring the change in mass, we need to put our vessel with reactants onto a balance and measure the mass at given time intervals. Any gas that escapes will be lost in mass. To measure the volume of gas, we must trap the gas into water and trap it into a measuring cylinder so that you can measure the volume of gas at different time intervals. Graphs can be drawn to show how the reaction progresses. At the start of the reaction, it is fastest. Here the line will be steepest. As the reaction progresses, some of the reactants start to get used up. The reaction slows down and the line becomes less steep. The reaction stops when all of the reactants are used up and the line remains horizontal. This graph represents the reaction between 2 grams of calcium carbonate powder with excess 1 molar hydrochloric acid at room temperature. We can add lines to this graph to show what will happen if we change the conditions. If we increase the temperature, the reaction will be faster. This means that it will be steeper at the start. We haven't changed anything about else about the reactant, so it will finish at the same point. We can see from the graph that the reaction itself will finish quicker. The volume of gas that is given off will remain the same. 
If we change the two grams of calcium carbonate powder for lumps, then the reaction will be slower. However, we will still give off the same volume of gas. It will just take longer for the reaction to get there. If we half the mass of powder which is used, we will half the volume of gas which is produced. If we increase the concentration of acid, we will make the reaction faster, however it will still give off the same volume of gas at the end. Pause the video now and work out which line represents each statement. So here in this graph we have three different lines. The green line represents a fast reaction, the blue line represents a slower reaction which gives us the same, the same amount of gas, and the grey line represents a slower reaction which gives off half as much gas. In this reaction we have magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas. This means that the hydrogen gas is coming from the hydrochloric acid. The two reactions that, get, that are using two molar hydrochloric acid will give off the same volume of gas. The reaction which only has one molar hydro hydrochloric acid will give off half as much gas. That means that this grey reaction is C. Statement A says we have magnesium powder and statement B has magnesium ribbon. Magnesium powder will react more quickly than magnesium ribbon will. Therefore, the green line is statement A and the blue line is statement B. The average rate of a chemical reaction can be calculated using this equation, which we'll find at the front of your data book. We will find that the term change in quantity can also be written as delta quantity. And change in time can be written as delta time. The units of average rate are the quantity divided by the time. For example, centimetres cubed per second, grams per minute or moles per litre per hour. Average rate can be calculated by extracting values from a graph. Here we're to calculate the average rate between 0 and 25 seconds. At 0 seconds, the volume of gas is 0. At 125 seconds, we need to read a value off of the graph. We can see that the volume of gas is around 15. For changing quantity, we take the quantity at the end of the time period minus the quantity at the start, and then divide by the time at the end of the time period minus the time at the start. This gives us 15 divided by 125. This is 0 0.12 centimetres cubed per second. We have centimetres cubed for the quantity and seconds for the time. We can also calculate average rate for a time period that is within the graph. Here we're looking at the time period between 250 and 400 seconds. At 250, we are around 32 centimetres cubed of gas. At 400 seconds, the reaction has stopped and is at 40. Again, we take the volume of gas at the end of the time period, which is 40, minus the volume of gas at the start of the time period, 32. We divide this by the time at, at the end of the time period, minus that at the start. This gives us 0 0.05 centimetres cubed per second. We can see that this number is less than the number that we had between 0 and 125 seconds which shows that the reaction is slowing down. The average rate of reaction can also be calculated using a table of results. Here we're calculating the average rate between 0 and 150 seconds. We just take the numbers out of the table. This gives a value of 0 0.13 centimetres per second. Looking at another time period, we're going from 180 to 300 seconds. This gives a value of 0 0.07 centimetres cubed per second. Pause the video now and calculate these two average rates. 
For this calculation, we're looking at the average rate between 120 and 210 seconds. This gives a value of 0 0.14 centimetres cubed per second. For the second example, we're looking at the average rate between 360 and 450 seconds. This is the very end of the reaction. This gives a value of 0 0.01 centimetres cubed per second. The reaction has almost finished at this stage. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!